personal experience, I didn't really realize my full potential as an athlete until I got to college and was on a um, structured program. So I, you know, I think it's just from my opinion, I think yeah. it's important that these athletes adopt this early on in their athletic journeys, I guess you could say. So just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I'd like, you should tell them a little bit about your uh, whole middle school, high school training experience too in a second. <laughs> but, but I think like, I think we all have a similar story to that. Absolutely. And which which uh, helps me connect with a lot of athletes right. because I could tell them the stories when I was 14 years old, day one in the weight room, how there was 25s on each side of the bar. Yeah. And the coach said, hey, you could probably do that. Go ahead and do a, do a push jerk. <laughs> It's like, what's a push jerk? <laughs> it's like, you got to like, push, yeah, push yeah, the yeah, biggest yeah. jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right. So I just kind of like used my legs and I pushed the bar overhead. And I right. remember like getting the bar two inches above my head. I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. Put the bar down. And now I look back, I'm like, wow, that's insane. That That's probably the, the exact same circumstance that so many athletes are put in, right. which based on what I just told you, uh, we would say that's high risk, low reward right, training. Right, absolutely. And in high school in general, um, a lot of a lot of athletes are put in that situation because, like, I don't know who's watching the weight room, who's giving right. me your instruction, who wrote the program, who's telling you what you should do, uh, and then who's making sure that the load is appropriate for your ability level. Right? Um, should you even be doing that exercise at all? Right? You know, regardless of the load that's selected. So there's there's so many variables um, that I think we appreciate and like we kind of view as like a, an artistic component of what we do. Right. And like when we have conversation, we're all really stimulated about it. Like, oh yeah, this person's ready for barbells. Yeah. You know? <laughs> awesome. where, where do we yeah. start them off, right? Let, let's get them doing like really slow lowers for the first couple of weeks, you know, and, yeah. like, and, and stuff like that, that we love, but like not a lot of people, not a lot of athletes are exposed to that. Right. And then I think a lot of uh, athletes think that it's uh, one equals one in terms of I'm in the weight room training here, mm -hmm. I'm in the weight room training there, and it's the same exact thing. So uh, I think it's important that athletes do get proper training, whether it's at your high school. There's plenty of high schools that have great strength coaches. Right. right. The majority do not, or a strength coach at all. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really important that athletes are, number one, uh, the individuality of their sport and of them personally is taken into account when developing a program for these people. Um, and then after that, making sure that they're progressing appropriately instead of, you know, again, going back to my story, the workout is on the wall. We do these four exercises Monday. We do these four exercises Wednesday. We do these four exercises Friday. Right. Um, and then you go as hard as you possibly can because if your buddy outlifts you, it's a big problem to your ego. So <laughs> right. you, yeah. don't, you don't let that guy push jerk more than you, yeah. right. even if you drop the bar on your head. Right, you yeah. know? That's a, it's, a, it's funny you bring that up. I was just about to say that you know it's a good thing that you're giving young athletes a space to come in and train properly because I guess you could say hazing or anything like that in the weight room early on is definitely a problem, like I know from personal experience. You know, I'm a, I was always a tall kid coming in, and I had an older kid like, oh, yeah, you could squat 135. And I had knew nothing about no mobility, <laughs> right. form, nothing. Yeah, I couldn't yeah, squat yeah. 135, yeah. but, of course, I had to do it because an older kid was telling me to. Right. Yeah. So I think you're providing a really good service for young athletes to come in and really introducing them how to properly train. Yeah. yeah. So you're definitely doing a good service there. Yeah, I can definitely relate to all of that. You know, <laughs> once I got to college... I didn't really, I never squatted really, yeah. you know, and I got to college and figure out like, okay, like, look at you now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, one thing, I, one thing I would like to say that we say to all of our athletes, which I think is really important right. that if even, you know, nothing about, uh, programming or anything like that, mm -hmm. um, take pride in having the best technique in the yeah. weight room as opposed yeah. to the amount of weight you're lifting. Absolutely. I think if there's one take home message, you're in, you're in the weight room, you're working out with, with your buddies. Everybody can kind of see what a pretty looking exercise is. Like you get like the guy who goes down halfway in a squat and right. then like, like you know, hunches over and then right. his like face almost collapses to his knees before they stand up. Right, right. I right. e me when I back squat. Heavy. <laughs> <laughs> like, like everyone sees like okay that didn't look great. Like you don't even yeah. have to be an expert in the industry. Right. But when you see someone drop straight down to a squat with really good control and they explode coming up, heels are flat on the ground, right. torso is relatively upright. Everyone's like, that's a good looking squat. Yeah. And strive to be that person if you're an athlete in the weight room. Try Absolutely. to be that person that's like, wow, your form's amazing. Yeah. Over the person that says, oh, you just put a fourth plate on each side of the bar. Nice job. Let's, let's <laughs> right. see what you can do, you know? Right. Um, I remember what I was going to say now. Oh, okay. Just how, you know, when you get to college, you don't realize how much it translates from the weight room to the field. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. know, like I probably could have been a 
10 times better player in high school if I knew how to do the proper training. You know, I, my arm would have been stronger, might have got better looks or something like that. Absolutely. You know, so that's just the importance of it. And I, I mean, you live and you learn. Right. You yeah. know. And it's funny too you bring up that um, because we you know both go to commercial gyms and you know you always see those people in there that ego lift you know what I yeah. mean they do the quarter squats <laughs> with five plates on the bar it's right. just like all right but like, that you're going because it's ego driven right you know, we're like here yeah. it's you're going for a reason it's actual training absolutely to that. but I think like just from our backgrounds um, you had more respect for a guy who just has 135 on the exactly. bar and is squatting ass to grass exactly you know and exploding up like I. Ten times more respect for that yeah. guy because yeah, he, he takes pride in his form yep. and his craft. Well, so. especially too in, in commercial gyms, you just see random you know Joe schmoes go in and just try to squat however much weight you can, and then they don't come back for another four weeks. <laughs> you know, that's like, true. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would rather exactly what you said. I'd rather see yeah. someone go from one thirty five one week and then one, you know just constantly exactly. progressively adding weight to their program. Right. You know, it's right. more respectful. Definitely. There's more of a goal driven. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 